Valley's 95.9 and 106.9. Good morning. I'm Earl Stewart. I welcome you to Earl Stewart on Cars, a live talk show all about how to buy, lease, maintain, or repair your car without being ripped off by a car dealer. With me in the studio is Nancy Stewart, my wife, co-host, and a strong consumer advocate, especially for our female listeners. We also have Rick Kearney, an expert on how to keep your car running right. I dare you to ask a question that Rick can't answer about the mechanics or electronics of your car. Also with us is my son, Stu Stewart, our link to cyberspace through Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Periscope. Stu is also the Spymaster Director of our Mystery Shopping Report. He dispatches our secret shopper weekly to an unsuspecting South Florida dealership. And now, on with the show. Good morning, everybody. We're back. This is uh, Earl, the recovering car dealer. I'm live. And we're, uh, I'm in the studio with a bunch of other live folks, too. We're here to bring you another interesting show. I just hope that you listeners out there and the, our regulars, I know you do enjoy the show and get excited about it. Uh, you new folks that are joining us, I hope, every week. Uh, get as uh, interested and exciting as we do. Uh, it's, you know, they say if you love what you do, it's not work. This isn't work for us. Uh, we look forward to it. It's just a lot of fun. And every Saturday, I'm thinking, and my mind's going, and we're all, uh, we're all just uh, uh, enthusiastic about being able to help you buy a car without being ripped off by a car dealer. How to have your car serviced? It's a, a niche. Uh, in uh, retail that has never caught up with the uh, intelligence and demands and expectations of the consumer. Uh, just about every other retailer you can think of uh, has figured it out that if you treat your customers with courtesy and respect and transparency, then they'll come to you and they'll buy. Uh, price is always a factor, but uh, to the educated consumer, uh, price is something that they have to shop and compare. You deny them that right and you alienate them. If you alienate your potential customer, you're never gonna sell them a vehicle, even if you do have a lower price. You have to treat your customers with intelligence and courtesy, respect, because the customers today are educated. Plus, we have a vast source of, you know, internet. I mean, it's only been around for a few years. Think about it. Google hadn't been around that long. Uh, for that matter, computers haven't been around that long. Now we have a huge database available to all the educated consumers to find the best price and the best car dealer uh, and the best way to go about buying the best car, Consumer Reports. Whereas 25 years ago, which is about the mindset of the average car dealer today, uh, 25 years ago these things were not available to any of us. Uh, sometimes I feel like we're preaching to the choir here at Earl Stewart on Cars. Most of you out there are educated consumers. Uh, we'd love to have the word spread. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to get people that have never heard the show in. Uh, if you can invite your friends and you just kind of spread the word, we'd re really appreciate it. Uh, I'm in the studio here with the folks I introduced earlier. Uh, to my right is Rick Kearney, a certified master diagnostic technician. And Rick has uh, been doing this for over a quarter century. Uh, he can fix anything that rolls on wheels, and uh, he, uh, oh, nobody bats a thousand, right, Rick? I mean, uh, especially his Toyota, I mean, and, but uh, trust me, uh, he works on all different makes of cars, and he stays on top of his profession, meaning he's going to school all the time. I think there was, you know, if you go back 30, 40 years, if you knew how to fix a car, you knew how to fix a car. Uh, the technology didn't change that fast. Now, it's a whirlwind of technological change. I talked to a customer the other day, in full transparency, I am still a car dealer. Been one for 47 years, actually longer than that, over 50 years. Uh, but uh, the customer was saying to me that, you know, I've had this car for two or three years, and I don't really need another car, but I think I should buy one because the technology is changing so fast. So the customers are becoming aware that we're on a whirlwind of technology, and Rick Kearney and all technicians have to stay up to speed. Otherwise, what they know is obsolete five years from today, I mean five years from now, if they never attend another school, then you, you better not go to that mechanic. I might say the same thing about doctors, by the way. You know, I used to, I used to be nervous, remember, uh, was it Doogie? 
What was his name? Doogie, Doogie Hauser. Hauser. Doogie Hauser. That was a big joke, you know. I'm not going to go to a, a, a doctor that's a kid. Today, I'm looking for young doctors. If I go to a doctor that's my age, uh, he, I, I sure pray that he's been keeping up with his medical technology. Because <laughs> if you haven't kept up with all technology today, whether you're uh, uh, selling cars or, or, or curing people as a doctor, you're, you're obsolete. Can't do that. We're going to try to keep you up to date at Earl Stewart on Cars today. We try to stay on top of it. That's another reason why it's good that we are car dealers. We do have a dealership, and we stay on top of the technology. We stay on top of buying, online buying, a whole new way of buying. And uh, if you're not buying online, you're paying too much for your car. We'll talk about that today. Uh, let, me, uh, let me start out with Nancy Stewart on my left. Uh, Nancy Stewart is my co-host, been with me uh, since the early days when we had a little half-hour show on CBU Radio. And uh, Nancy has done something unique. Uh, first of all, she's the only woman in the studio here. She, she calls it sometimes the old boys club, and uh, to some extent it is. There's one, two, uh, three, four old boys. I'm the oldest boy. And then there's Nancy. And Nancy has built our audience from virtually zero female uh, 17, let's call it 20 years ago, uh, to what we are today, which is very near parity. We're about 50-50. And uh, if you don't think that's important, then you must be a man. Because if you're a woman <laughs> and you're living today, uh, you realize you're just not getting a fair shake and things are coming around. And thanks to Nancy Stewart, uh, this, this show is now at parity. So, Nancy, tell us all about... Uh, what happens if you could get a couple new female callers to Well, to before I get to that, I have to say that uh, the ladies are helping me build this platform, and uh, we're changing history. And uh, I want to thank all of you who have helped me along the way. Uh, but uh, as uh, get to Earl's point, uh, $50. Fifty dollars for the first two new lady callers. Is that exciting? Boy, I'll tell you what. We appreciate the ladies whenever they give us a call, and this is our way of rewarding you. Uh, if you could share with us uh, anything at all, whether it was a purchase, whether uh, you uh, had some something to share with us as far as your uh, servicing uh, experience uh, and how that went, uh, anything at all, call and say hello. Fifty dollars for the first two new lady callers. 877-960-9960 and of course um, if any of you want to get in touch with us and you're a little bit shy you can take advantage of the other number uh, that we extend to you and that is the text number 772-497-6530 and you know I want to mention something else that's really important and that is uh, in reference to our Attorney General, Ashley Moody. You know, in light of uh, some of the mystery shopping reports, you know, uh, we, we really need you to get in touch with her. Uh, we do a pretty good job of exposing these car dealers, but if you could make a phone call, if you could make a phone call and help us, it would really go a long, long way. That phone number is 850-414-3300. Give her a call. Let her know how you feel about the consumer being taken advantage of. Now back to the recovering car dealer. And, of course, we have to remember we're international now. We're all over the world in terms of reach with Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Uh, we're streaming live all over the planet. That's uh, Florida's Attorney General, Ashley Moody, and uh, we're working on her because we're in Florida. But all you folks out there in all 50 states or wherever you are listening to Earl Stewart on Cars, the Attorney General is the chief law enforcement officer in every state. And it's a good place to start. And you file a complaint with the Attorney General on any business, you get their attention. So uh, Florida, Ashley Moody, and uh, uh, do the right thing file a complaint. If they don't have the complaints, they don't act. It's as simple as that. Um, let me uh, talk to Stu Stewart here, my son. He's a uh, general manager of our retail dealership Hi. that we have. And uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he's uh, also the uh, cyber uh, space um, undercover agent manager. He, uh, he's in charge of our mystery shopping report is what I'm trying to say. So Stu, uh, 
I think that's one of the most important things that we do on this show, certainly most entertaining and maybe informative. It's the highest pressure job I have all week. It's way harder than the uh, ma managing a Toyota dealership. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it takes some creativity, and I, I well, I'm exaggerating a lot, but it is it is kind of stressful because we got to keep it interesting, and we could sit there and do the same thing over and over again. So we we're conscious of the fact that we are on radio and we want to have listeners, and so uh, we don't predict, and we certainly don't script what happens. It's kind of it's a surprise to us every week, and usually we uh, do the report on on Thursday or sometimes Friday, and. Um, but I got to tell you, it's rare that we get a boring one. It's rare when it just goes, okay, that's what we expected to happen. There's always a, a, a twist or something unexpected happening. Uh, this week, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, we went back to looking at uh, deceptive advertising again. We were going to try and kind of break away from that theme we've been doing, but we ran into one that was just too good to ignore. So uh, we got a special treat for you. It's, from, it's for uh, Southern uh, 441 Nissan um, out on Southern Boulevard, um, kind of, where's that, Royal Palm area? Uh, yeah, West Palm Beach, Royal Palm. Royal Palm yeah, that's actually. out west, and um, yeah. um, I forget who owns, is that a Terry? Does the Terry Taylor Group, I think, owns uh, Terry Taylor. Yeah, he's yeah. the largest private owner of car dealership chain in the USA. Yeah, so he's a. Uh, it's, it's a. It's a pretty big deal. He. I know that his. Uh, like his uh, structures, he he doesn't actively uh, participate in the dealerships. He hires a general manager, puts in a strong GM, yeah. makes them a, a partner, a financial partner in the ownership, yeah. and. Uh, and kind of lets them run it their way. Yeah, we too often personalize uh, car dealers to put their name on their dealerships. Yeah. Uh, Terry Taylor does not do that. No. Uh, and that's probably a good idea. Uh, but there are a lot of car dealerships that do that. We do it, but we yeah. only have one dealership. But uh, I'm also named Earl, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the, the guy that runs the store, if there are 12 stores, a good example would be Schumacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Schumacher. Uh, owns 12 dealerships, Schumacher, uh, you know, Nissan, Buick, uh, Chevrolet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, he can't possibly be personally responsible. Well, he is personally responsible, yeah. but Ultimately. He, he can't control 12 dealerships himself. He has to have the right management in place. As the people watching me fool with my mask on Facebook, I apologize. But you don't have your clip uh, then? I have it in the back like oh, that. you do? Okay. So, uh, Bill Wallace is another example. And uh, he has uh, about the same number of dealerships. And when there's a problem, these are good people. Uh, I know both of them personally. And they're not trying to screw the customers. But if you're not careful, when you put a, a person in charge and you have a commission structure and you pay a person 25% of all the profit they can make on a customer, you know, you're putting the fox in the hen house. So you have to be sure that you have someone with morals and ethics that trump the, uh, the, the dollar. And that's pretty rare. It's pretty hard to, to find. Now, Warren Buffett once said, when I hire a manager, I look for someone with energy, talent, and integrity. And if he doesn't have the last one, the first two don't count. Think about it. Uh, if you don't have integrity, you don't want that person running your car dealership, or for that matter, being a salesman or a sales manager. So I didn't mean to go off on a rant, Stu, but uh, I, sometimes I think people get mad at Chuck Schumacher and yeah. Bill Wallace, and, the, and we were talking about um, uh, Terry, Terry, Terry Taylor. Taylor yeah. And yeah, obviously, you know, Chuck Schumacher, if he even wanted to visit every single one of his dealerships, the entire day would be taken up by his travel time. Exactly. I imagine he makes a point to, to visit each one um, maybe once a week, if, whatever is possible, but it is, it is really hard. You have to be on site to see what's going on. Um, otherwise, uh, a general, uh, an owner, um, or even a, like a general manager of a group sometimes, uh, yeah. well, th th all the information they're getting is from their people. It's coming from their managers. Okay. Uh, problems are whitewashed and yeah. filtered out um, to make his people look good. They're trying to protect themselves. So if you're not on site, uh, and that's just a, that's an advantage of having a, a single dealership versus a big group. Uh, you can really have a personalized touch. And I think we see that uh, more. Usually we get better shopping reports out of like a, you know, a yeah. single point de dealer. Yep. But we got a good one today, so I'm, um, I'm excited. I can't wait until 930. Right. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, we are going to go to our first female caller. Great. And that's Teresa from Port St. Lucie. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. Well, that, what can we do for you this morning besides write your well, check for $50? <laughs> yes. 
And you know what? I don't even deserve that if it's coming from you guys because uh, Mr. Stewart honestly gave us some very good advice when we went through this situation that was worth way more than $50. Well, thank you. That's great. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. (laughs) I'm glad you could use that information. Yes. So do you want to just know generally what happened? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, Teresa. I'd love to hear. We all would love to hear uh, your experience. Okay, and we read the articles, and they've helped us, and they've helped many of our friends. I just want to let you know. But the situation was our daughter went into a dealer to buy a car for her brother. She had money that she had gotten from her taxes. Her brother was down in the dumps and only had a motorcycle and she was worried about him driving out in the weather and all this just to go back and forth from work so she was going to use her money to buy him a car and he was going to pay her back so she went to the the, uh, dealership and then they saw what kind of car she had and kind of started talking about you know well hey we could get you into a car with 72 months no finance charge and blah 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 um, she was already upside down in her payments for this car that she drove in, and she's 24, young, and they talked her into trading in her car, and then she ended up with 20 more thousand dollars, you know, on another car. So, in other words, not only was she up down, upside down, but now she's like double upside down with 72 months of no interest payment. Mm. So we were very upset, you know, and we didn't even know about this for a month as parents, and she just kind of said something to us, and the amount of payment, and she's a single mother, <laughs> she's oh, no. a single mother with a seven-year-old child, mm-hmm. she's not married, and now she's in this situation, so my, but the bottom line of this is we didn't know what to do, we tried to talk to them, and we did not get anywhere with them, not one little place. And every solution that they ended up telling us was going to cost more money. Terrible. Put more money down on this. Yeah, we'll get you in a lower car, but you got to put eight thousand more dollars down to uh, get into this car. It didn't make any sense. And as parents, we we left there several times in heated arguments with you know the managers and yeah. everything like that, just feeling like well, we can't do anything. Of course. And so we end. And we ended up, actually, I emailed Mr. Stewart, and I left my number, and he called us back and several times spoke to us, you know, just in several things that we could actually try to do, which were very helpful, and I believe he actually even called the dealership. So it was, he went way beyond, we didn't even buy the car from him. So it ended up, we came to a solution and we have to live with it. It was okay. It wasn't what we wanted. She still has that car. But, you know, we got a little bit out of it, but not much. Yeah. So, you know, you still have a bad taste in your mouth about it. You do. You do. That's generally what happens. Just saying, don't go to the dealership by yourself, especially if you're a young girl, single. Great and advice. And there's other things you can learn from this. <laughs> Yes, great advice. And uh, with the with the columns that uh, Mr. Stewart does, and uh, all of the advice from uh, the radio show on Saturday mornings, um, you mm-hmm. you came out uh, you know with a little bit of leeway. You would have loved to have had more, but uh, well, it's a learning experience. It's a big learning experience. Yes, it is. Of so. course. Yeah, but the the uh, advice that you just shared with us as far as going into a dealership uh, by yourself, especially whenever you are a female and you're 24 years old, it doesn't cut it. It doesn't matter, you yeah. know. Uh, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter how educated you are, how prepared you are. You just need uh, that second set of ears. Yeah, I just wish they would have had a conscience and said, you know what? Why don't you bring somebody with you? If you have a parent or a friend, let's just talk about this. You only make $10 an hour. Uh-huh. So yeah. I don't think this is a good decision to do with this. Point. You're, you're you really know, treading on thin ice. You have. Yeah, Abs- yeah. absolutely. But she didn't get it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This happens, you yeah. know, and it was uh, great uh, that uh, you were there in her corner. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Well, thank so you, so Teresa. Anyway, I, remember, I, just wanna... I remember your call, and I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't do more. Uh, do you, na uh, do you na mind if I name the uh, the dealership? I, I know the owner, and I, that's that's when we talked. I... Well, the thing is, is that we signed something that we wouldn't try to do anything else, so I'm not okay. sure if that would be a good idea or not. I got you. Well, yeah. I, I won't in that case, but... Uh, well, that's interesting. Your, 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 your call has helped a lot of people out there, and it's an experience that is not uh, uncommon. And when we started the show off this morning, I talked about when you have a car dealership and you're paying your salespeople 25% of the price of the car, the higher they raise the price to the buyer, the more money they make. That incentive plan yeah. in itself is just yeah. asking for trouble. So when young people and very old people, people that are English language impaired, people that don't have the necessary education, uh, I call them the victims. When they come in, unfortunately, it's like it's like uh, walking into a uh, wolf pack, and all yeah. the people that you're dealing with are getting a piece of you, and based on the higher the price they can, and they see a young lady, as you say, making ten bucks an hour. And they put her in a car yeah. she couldn't afford, and she uh, probably still can't afford. But uh, your your message is so important. Thank you for calling, Teresa. We really yeah. appreciate. It. I think you're a first time caller. So. She is a first time uh, caller, and yeah. Teresa, you know, I'm, I might uh, reiterate, uh, you, you know, what uh, Earl said. You just don't know what you have done this morning by calling the show and sharing your experience, because there are a number of ladies that are listening. And they're just a little bashful. They're a little nervous. They don't want to call. But in order for me to yeah. build this platform, it's people like you sharing that helps. And I just want to let you know yeah. that. So good luck, and I thank you, and uh, we'll get that out to you. And we thank you, and we don't deserve it from you, so we don't even need that. We just wanted to let you know. Well, well, give it, you, can, you can take the $50 and donate to Big Dog Ranch Rescue. How about that? Okay. <laughs> All <laughs> thank, right. Thank you, Teresa. Take care. Be safe. Thanks so much, Teresa. You're welcome. 877 960 or you can text us at 772-497-6530. And don't forget, www.youranonymousfeedback.com. I won't, won't mention the name because uh, she signed a confidentiality agreement that she wouldn't take it any further. But I will say this. That, Does that uh, happen often, to sign something like that? Um, I don't think so. I, I don't recall yeah. that. Uh, it came up in a conversation um, on the show. Somebody asked about non-disclosure agreements. Um, maybe this was just because there was a conflict and a sort of a resolution they tried to work on, so they did that. Yeah, they did, yeah. They did uh, mitigate it a little bit for her, and uh, um, uh, I think it was a lot better than where it started out. Uh, but again, it, it had to do with the owner. I Because I've been a car dealer here, uh, for 50 plus years, I know a lot of the car dealers personally. Can you say his name like in Pig Latin? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to jeopardize her settlement or whatever you want to call it. But, but uh, usually the people that I talk to uh, that are, are the owners, I said earlier in the show, uh, they have a conscience and uh, they will usually take care. If you have a problem, if you can get up the ladder wherever the problem is, if you really get taken advantage of, you got to go above the salesmen and sales managers. They are the toughest ones. And then take it up to the general manager, ideally the owner or the dealer. But things went so far south uh, that uh, she just had to sign something, uh, a waiver that she wouldn't share her story. Well, they, 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 or excuse they, me, they, not her story, they, but the name of the they dealership. Did, they, they did something for her that they didn't have to do, and, uh, and they didn't want to... Uh, give her uh, part of what she asked for and then have her hire a lawyer and sue them. Yep. So that's a business decision. You know, you say to a customer, uh, I, I can't give you everything you're asking for, but I can give you half, and I don't have to give you this because you signed all the paperwork. Remember, whether you're 24, year, 24 years old or, or whether you're 84 years old, when you sign a contract, uh, you signed the contract, and they, they, if they make a ten thousand dollar profit on you, when the average profit's only a thousand, that's not illegal. You can charge as much you want for a service, for a car, for a lease. If I could sell uh, a new car uh, for a million dollars, that's perfectly legal. The MSRP might be fifty thousand, yeah. but I would sell it for a million dollars, 
that's legal. If they signed the papers and gave me the money, they can't get their money back. Yeah. So. Well, Teresa, if you're still listening, again, we thank you for calling in. Um, the uh, Stu was talking about the mystery shopping report, and uh, I don't think he pats himself on the back enough because his creative writing really puts <laughs> this mystery shop together in such an eloquent way that it uh, just well, doesn't. We, it doesn't. Can we call it reporting instead of creative writing? <laughs> <laughs> because it's, uh, it's, it's, How about, it's very factual. It's quite, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. quite eloquent. It's, uh, it's, quite, very it's definitely factual. Yes. Pardon me? It's a very descriptive journalistic style. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, call it what you might. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, as far as the mystery shopping report is concerned, you read it and you just want to read the next word, the next paragraph, uh, because it is put together in such a way I that I think about you every week when I write it. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because it will keep your attention. Uh, we... <laughs> 877-960-9960 or you can text us at 772-497-6530 we're waiting to hear from you on www.youranonymousfeedback.com we are going to go to John who is a regular caller from Palm City good morning John good morning to everyone I just want to talk about a car of the future but it's here right now Earl and Nancy predicted this car as a very, very hot number right from the beginning, almost purchased one. There was just a stockholders meeting in Fremont, California. By the way, I think Earl would know, is that the plant originally that Toyota and General Motors, I think was called a view, that had a joint ownership? Yeah, that's what uh, Rick and Stuart both shakers have had. Yes, that is. Well, here's the greatest news. Leon, Eon, Le Eon Musk promised at the stockholders meeting within three years to have a $25,000 Tesla. Oh, now that's $12,000 less than the lowest price Model 3, which is now starts at $37,900. Introduced, that was last month, that was lowered by $2,000. His SUV was lowered from $84,990 to $79. Uh, all his models along the line were reduced two and three thousand dollars, but here's the top of the news of the twenty-five thousand dollar car. He promised a car that they're going to make with a battery that's going to last one million miles Amazing, isn't before it? it needs any maintenance or any or it doesn't break down. Yeah. So it's all great news. Uh, people that were hesitant, uh, there's a car that will be reduced as low as $25,000, yeah. and it's nothing but good news. So My, he's a man of his it. word, and I believe that this will be a fabulous car, and there'll be a lot of competition from the big three, especially, and uh, we're well on our way to the electric, full electric cars. So I had to mention this meeting. By the way, it was held outdoors, and a lot of enthusiastic owners with Teslas attended that meeting with their automobiles. Yeah. So there's nothing but great news. A Tesla, a Tesla will be in the will of a lot of people. Now, you you leave your Tesla to your son, and then your son will leave it to your grandson. I mean, think about it, a million miles. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no very, very many parts, right, Rick? Uh, an electric car, pure electric car, uh, just has so few, uh, um, what is the word, moving parts, really. Uh, your wheels and your tires and and what else is there? I mean, uh, if that battery will last, which is uh, the huge part of the cost of a car, uh, you could just keep it forever. Well, you've got the electric motors, which are the only real moving parts, yeah. um, bearings and brakes, um, electronic components. Yeah. The only Doors. thing I'd be concerned about is one lightning strike and, whoops, it's gone. <laughs> well. It's the same thing that happens if a lightning strikes you, right? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. This is true. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> well it's just the wrong guy. The people that predicted the success of this car, and they test drove it years ago, and it was Earl and Nancy Stewart. Yeah. Well, thank you, John. I, I tell you what. Thank I, you. I had no idea what. The, if you'd have told me back then that uh, Tesla would have a battery that would last a million miles, I would have bet you, I'd have bet you a million dollars he wouldn't do it. Uh, you know, five years ago. It's amazing uh, 
what this man and what this company is doing. And all the manufacturers are jumping on the, on the bandwagon too, but electric cars are just so exciting. Uh, thank you very much for the call, John. I, I would seriously consider buying one of those myself. And sure. I'm, I'm a diehard Toyota nut. So. Of course, you're a drag racer. You like the acceleration. No, actually, I would like to have the, just that peaceful, quiet, yeah. silent acceleration. Drive like the wind. Silent drive. Yeah. You know. like. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John. The good, the good point is that when did you ever hear of a brand new car that comes out and they're actually reducing prices of yeah. it? That's impossible. <laughs> exactly. It's usually every year it goes up that it comes out, yeah. and here is a two and $3,000 reduction yeah. on present models that they have yeah. that shows you what this company is. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I remember when I was a Pontiac dealer back in the 70s and the Bonneville came out and the sticker price, the MSRP, was over $10,000. I said, that's it. We'll never sell another car. No one's going to pay $10,000 for a car. And uh, you know, here we are now. Yeah. Uh, now 50000 is the average price. I'll tell you what, John. Every week that we talk about Elon Musk and the Tesla, well, I become more and more interested in going back and taking another test drive and maybe talking Earl into purchasing one. I probably will. I probably will buy one. I mean, uh, if it's any funny thing Earl mentioned the Pontiac. I was in high school, and my favorite car, even today, I don't have one, I wish I did, is a 57 Pontiac Pontival convertible. Oh, wow, man. that was a hot Number car. car. Yeah, that was a hot Fantastic. one. I didn't know you had one. Was it a fuel injected? I didn't have it. I wanted it, I wanted, but I didn't yeah. have it. Yeah, they only made one per dealer, 1957 Pontiac Bonneville convertible, and it was fuel injected. They had one per dealer. I'll bet you that car, you could probably check it out for me, John. Uh, you're an antique car guy. What's a 57 Pontiac fuel injected car in good shape go for today? I'm going to guess, what, a quarter million? Uh, yes, some of them are. Remember, there was only one per dealer. One per Pontiac dealer was built. So they're very because high. the rarity, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But I did. I was lucky enough to have a 57. I bought it used, yeah. Chevrolet, and it didn't have fuel injection, but it had the two fours. Yeah. Well, John, thanks. You're, the, you're, you're a great, great caller, and you yeah. always have something. And particularly this week, this uh, million-mile battery. Wow. Thanks very much for that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. Definitely. Yeah. Interesting conversation, John. Thank you so much. 877. Give, give us a okay, I thought you dozed <laughs> off over there. Oh, goodness gracious. This is live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> give us a call toll-free, 877-960-9960. And don't forget, uh, ladies out there, I have uh, $50 for one more First one time. more female caller. If it's the first time that you call, you win yourself $50. <clears throat> Give us a call. I'm waiting to hear from you. I can't do this alone. 877-960-9960. Now back to the recovering car dealer. You know, I haven't talked to Rick, and I just want to remind you out there that Rick Kearney can answer your questions about anything, any year, make, model, car. Uh, and my, my blog in Florida Weekly, I'll hold it up for you, is it how to uh, uh, service your car during a pandemic without, you know, getting yourself in trouble. And uh, really, Rick really wrote this. Uh, I, I did the, I, I, I put it on paper, <laughs> but I used it with the information from Rick Kearney. And I know a lot of you, are, I get calls every day now. What am I going to do? I don't want to bring my car in for service. Am I going to uh, avoid my warranty because I'm not getting it service according to manufacturer's recommendations? So if you have any questions like this, Rick Kearney is right here to answer them for you. Uh, 877 Nine six zero ninety nine sixty, and he's monitoring the YouTube. In fact, he's got a YouTube uh, inquiry right now, uh, or you can text Rick at seven seven two four nine seven six five three zero. Let's go to your YouTube, Rick. You, you know, before uh, Rick goes to his YouTube, Scott has been holding, and Scott's calling from Del Rey. Uh, good morning, Scott. Welcome to Earl Stewart on Cars. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. You're quite welcome. What can we do for you today? Well, I kind of have a bit of a technical question. I have a um, 2013 Kia Soul, nice older car, and we had a problem with the key fob. And um, in that particular year and car, it doesn't, the, the car will start. It doesn't have the chip in it to start it, but you do like to use the remote to re 
remotely open, uh, lock and unlock your vehicle. And one of them had cracked and broken, and so my wife wanted to have two. And so I went online and was able to purchase a key fob. Um, and I took it apart, and I didn't have to cut the key because I used the old one. You know, I'm trying to save myself some money because the um, key fob purchased from a dealership is sometimes as much as $350. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so I was able to get the key fob and move the old key over to the new one, and I contacted a dealership as well as a locksmith, and they wanted an awful lot of money to do that connection between the car and the key fob. So I did some research, and I found that you could buy a device online, and um, I did that. And I was able to make the remote uh, talk to the car, and it locked and unlocked it. Um, I don't know if you guys, I mean, you, you're technical guys, I'm sure probably are familiar, but I couldn't get it to do both of the key fobs. I'm only able to get one of them to work. And I was curious. And, and mind you, I had to do an awful lot of digging online to even find out about this device. It just seems that um, it's not well known, and in, uh, there's not a lot of um, information out there. There's no manual, or and if there is, it's in Chinese. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I was just curious if any of your technical guys know how when you connect the device to the reader that's underneath your steering wheel and it connects to the vehicle, if there is a way to tell it that you want to do two, it just doesn't seem to be um, obvious. Rick should be able to answer that question. Well, I'm not real familiar with the aftermarket devices, um, mainly because a lot of those now, they're pretty well obsolete on the newer cars because people were getting hold of those and using them for illegal purposes, obviously, to steal cars. So oh, goodness. A, a lot of the newer cars now, they have restricted access to programming those keys and remotes, and they're keeping it to dealership only. And, of course, their reason being they don't want to make it easy for someone to be able to copy your key, say if you use a valet parking sure. somewhere. Um. I'm guessing that that system may only be able to communicate enough just to program one key in at a time. However, the dealership should be able to program that in. Uh, normally, we only charge like one hour labor, which is about $150 to program all the keys. And even if you do come with keys from eBay or something, you know, we will at least attempt to program them. Yeah, let, me, let me jump in there. Uh, a lot of people don't understand. We say one-hour labor. What that means is it's a charge. It's a flat rate charge. It doesn't mean it takes one hour to do the work. Right. And uh, I would guess that, uh, Rick, uh, your experience, you can program a key, right? I mean. Toyota keys, yes. Toyota key. So uh, uh, when someone gives you a Toyota key and says, please program that, in terms of clock hour and minutes, how long does it take you? 20, 30 minutes at the most. Okay, so it's about 20. I'm, I'm surprised it takes that long, to be honest with you. But so, uh, you Some of them are less. Yeah. yeah. So let's say a half an hour on the well, average. If it's an interrupter, meaning that sure. you can't start your car with it, that's much more difficult, and it does take quite a bit. I see. But to just get the remote to talk to the car, I can do it with this device in maybe 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. But, like I said, um, we're, I'm lucky in that I have an older vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 2013. And like you say, the newer yeah. ones, it's much more difficult. I probably wouldn't have even tried. Yeah, Scott, my, but, my, uh, the reason I was pursuing that yeah. line is because that I think uh, $125 to program uh, something that takes somebody a half an hour to do is a lot of money. Uh, uh, and I think if you shop and compare, uh, take, I, I would call three or four Kia dealers and explain your dilemma and uh, and and say, yeah, listen, I just don't they're, want... They're all fairly expensive, and yeah. that's why I went looking for locksmiths, because they yeah. can do them, and yeah. they were not much cheaper. And to be honest with you, at one point when, before COVID, and when I had all my hours, I probably would have just gone and taken it to the dealership. But yeah. now I... 
um, like everyone, I think uh, that's being affected by this. I don't have as many hours, and I don't have as much money. And to sure. me, 150 is an awful lot of money. That's why I went looking online, and I, yeah. you, like I said, it's hard to get the information, but I was able to figure it out. And you have to make sure for anybody else that hears this and is like, oh, I could do that. You need to do some research because sometimes you will uh, have a newer vehicle that you can't use it for, or you might have a vehicle that that particular device isn't designed to help you with. So, yeah. Scott, can um, you can you give us you a name? Can you, give, can you give us the name of that device that you bought? I mean, uh, I'm interested. Just curious. And it did have my year, so I tried that, and that was what enabled the remote to work. But I guess my particular year doesn't need to have an interrupter yeah. uh, uh, program. Well, Scott, thanks Great. for that information. Thanks for calling. I'd love to get that name of that device, so later on, we really appreciate you. I will you. get it back to you. I will actually call back in about five, ten minutes. And oh, great. Give, that yeah, information yeah, give it to, to Mark your, in the control your, room. You give it, uh, just, you got it. Yeah, he'll write down. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, take care. We are, uh, our Thanks call. for taking the call. You all stay safe. You oh, too. thank you. The same to you, Scott. Our, uh, our callers are amazing. Uh, they can give us information uh, that we, we just don't have. So uh, you are an important part of the show ladies and gentlemen we can't emphasize that enough and we thank you for tuning in every saturday morning uh 877-960-9960 give us a call we'd love to hear from you and i'm still waiting for that second first new lady caller to give her the 50 dollars that she rightfully deserves uh and also you can text us you can text us at 772-497-6530 so take advantage of those numbers. Okay, uh, YouTube. Uh, Rick's got a YouTube over here. Um, let's see. First one we had coming in was Guy Larrabee. He says, I recently bought two used cars from two different dealers' Internet sites. After much squeezing, I was able to get about an 8 to 10% discount. Why is it so hard to get a good deal on used cars? Used cars are um, high demand, low supply currently. Uh, that uh, situation is rectifying itself. It peaked about a month and a half ago. It had to do with uh, the whole uh, car buying frenzy uh, with the pandemic. And uh, counterintuitively, everybody, uh, most everybody was surprised that uh, during the pandemic, car buying, retailing actually accelerated considerably, especially with used cars. And uh, Carvana as an online car company uh, I was watching the uh, CNBC Financial Network on Friday. Their stock has doubled uh, uh, recently, and, and so uh, used cars are hot. So it's a it's a it's a it's a seller's market. You pay a lot of money for a used car today. Be careful. Okay, do you have another YouTube over there? Oh, we got a couple of comments from Donovan on the. Uh, let me get this scrolled back a little bit. He says, the big three are going to be the ones to miss out on the time of the start of the electric cars. Is in his opinion, Tesla and the European brands are really on the front runners for electric cars. Tesla's going to need about three years for that $25,000 car, but Volkswagen says they'll have a $30,000 all-electric car made in the U.S. this year. If you can believe anything Volkswagen says. Uh, yeah, after their little fiasco. Their, their CEO, CEO is currently uh, doing a trial for criminal activity, but uh, their previous CEO, I should say. No, I mean, I, I think 
Uh, the manufacturers themselves are not going to be able to come up with a battery. Uh, they're going to have to affiliate with software companies, basically the Googles of the world. Yeah, Panasonic. And, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, your battery. So it'll be a merger activity. A, uh, uh, it's going to be a thinning of the ranks because the auto manufacturer that cannot come up with a good battery is going to be out of business. So it's going to be a desperate situation, and uh, it's going to be a technical uh, accomplishment. They either do it or they perish. They should buy okay. them from Tesla. Tesla, yeah. Tesla's, if they can uh, make them. <laughs> Yeah, Tesla's, uh, but they're not the only uh, uh, genius. Elon Musk is not the only genius in the world. There are a lot of geniuses out there. And when you have all the geniuses in the world focusing their minds on building a million-mile battery like Elon Musk says he's going to build in two years, it's probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. okay. I think the battery life is going to be the big one. Uh, and Donovan also mentions that the Volkswagen is rumored to have a 250-mile range three years of free charging, and they're also building thousands of charging stations all over the country, yeah. kind of like Tesla has right now. Well, we'll see. I mean, Volkswagen has uh, made some big promises before. Uh, three years ago, they promised they were going to be the number one manufacturer in the world, and uh, that didn't happen because they were lying about their emission controls to make that happen. They were selling diesel cars in the United States, and they were jury-rigging the uh, software and the and to, to fool the EPA, and they were fined, what was it, a billion dollars, and people were going to jail. So, as I say, I, I, to me, uh, Volkswagen has lost their credibility, and uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a new sheriff in town, and they're going to get their act together, but I... Yeah, we hope so. Yeah. Uh, Scott did call back, and oh, uh, he, uh, he gave us uh, this information. I'll pass that over to you. Yeah, I... Uh, Guys, Auto Key Pro Tool CK100. I'll have to check that out, and we'll see. Uh, uh, so that, that was the Auto Key. Yes, it's Auto Key Pro Tool CK-100 plus. Hmm. Okay. How about Thank some, you, uh, Scott. Yeah. How about some normal text over there? We got that. Yeah, we got some. <laughs> I don't know where, to, where which one to pick. I'll, I'll start with Facebook. Um, I already answered it. One says it's from Muhammad. He says, Earl, why are you, why are you wearing a mask? I replied, I said, uh, because he is performing minor elective surgery on Rick at 10 a.m. Oh. So. Well, I, I, the, the reason I'm wearing a mask <laughs> is I'm sitting in a studio. With a, I, I think Muhammad knows why you're wearing a mask. Oh, okay. I yeah. mean, there's, come on. Oh, okay. Where have you been, Muhammad? Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody's wearing a mask. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't know where you are. Though. <clears throat> uh, we'll, we'll go to a text from Brian from California, the west coast of California. Um, it seems like every week on the show we hear a sad story about someone that's trapped in a lease. Earl says he gets stories from people all over, all over the time that are trapped. My driving habits have changed during the pandemic, and I decided to get rid of a leased car I had. It was a Ford Fiesta ST. I had 21 payments left on the lease. I listed an ad for my car on swapalease.com. You list your car on there, and then if your manufacturer supports swapping leases, uh, go through them to do the lease swap uh, process once you find the right person and take over the lease. The person then takes over your lease exactly where you left off, and then you wipe your hands clean of everything. It took a ton of time, persistence, and patience. I went through three people until, until I found the right person to take over the car. Then, and then it took Ford a full month during the process to complete the transfer. So they participated. I didn't know that. Um, I saved myself thousands of dollars by doing this. It can pay off um, if your manufacturer is willing to swap leases, and not all are for it. Um, if you have the right car and the manufacturer, it can be done. So don't give up. It worked for me. And it worked for you too. So take care, and I'm looking forward to the show as always. Well, that's good, Brian. Now uh, you are a super educated consumer, and unfortunately, the average person doesn't have the intelligence and the intuitiveness to do what you did. Um, there are leasing companies that will not allow you. I didn't even know this. I was talking to another person with a problem like you had, and uh, I found out that Toyota will not, uh, at least Southeast Toyota Leasing, mm. will not allow you to uh, change. Reassign. Yeah, you, know, you, you have to keep the lease. You can't swap. When you do swap a lease, and swap a lease is a good app. It's a good company. They've been around for a while. Uh, you have to remember that the leasing company that you're leasing from has to agree to the swap. Now think about it. You're a leasing company. Rick Kearney leases a car from you and you're making your payments for 24 months, you got a 36-month lease. Now, Rick says, you know, I don't like that car. I don't like the color. I, I want to uh, 
uh, get rid of the lease and get something else. And the leasing company says, I don't want you to. You're making your payments and I'm making money. And you say, well, I got another guy here. I can take over my payments. And they say, how do we know he'll make the payments? We checked you out very thoroughly. And you've got great credit, and you pay on time every month. Why should I let somebody else take it over? So my point being, swap police could very well find a third, another person to take over your lease. But why should the leasing company agree to that? First of all, they have to go through their due diligence all over again, investigate the new person, and there's a chance that they won't make their payments, but the guy they got that was making the payments, they know he's going to make them. So it's an uphill battle. Uh, and I congratulate Brian for winning it, albeit it took four months. I was going to say your lease was up, right? I mean, the fact that uh, it took so long to go through the process, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an alternative, but it's not a very good one for the average person. Next. Okay. I wonder if Toyota Financial what? Services um, allows it. I know Southeast Toyota doesn't. Good question. I was just playing around on the website. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of Toyotas listed, so maybe uh, the, the national financing arm of Toyota, maybe they permit it. Don't yeah. know, but not here in the Southeast. We know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are, well, first, I have breaking news. Alan Napier is uh, attempting to give himself a coronavirus haircut. And he uh, has to uh, so share that. He's with trying to make his head look like the coronavirus with those like things sticking out, because <laughs> that's what he's going to look like if he's doing it himself. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm not sure. He uh, says he has to be a con contortionist. Okay, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Alan. Uh, we are going to go to Frank, and uh, Frank's giving us a call from Jupiter Farms. Good morning, Frank. Well, good morning to all the Stewarts and and co-hosts. Um, I got a question that might pertain to other people in the listening audience besides myself, especially with the coronavirus and maybe not want to come into the dealerships that much. Um, with the um, truck I got for my son back in May, and for the, um, you know, to keep the warranty in effect, I guess the oil changes on the t t um, Tacoma is what, every six months for 5,000 miles to keep the warranty in effect? All right. Rick so, dozed off. I'm sorry, I was off. just no, reading some uh, comments it, on YouTube uh, it, here. It's 10,000 miles or one year uh, on the on the later model trucks, the uh, that's synthetic, synthetic oil. Oh, well, that's interesting because I had someone calling me, supposedly, supposedly from Toyota, saying that your warranty is going to be null and void if you don't bring it in before six months for 5,000 miles. What year truck did you say it was? It was brand new, 2020. Oh. Well, they do the. Um, there's still six month intervals, but um, you only do the oil change on the on the uh, for ten thousand miles. Five thousand, you do a rotation, and some, right. sometimes some other service. You need to rotate and balance your tires. Check the tires. Uh, the car needs to be checked, but the oil is good for ten thousand miles or one year. Yep. Well, thank you. That's, that's because it's really hard to um, talk to my son. He doesn't talk to me. I make the payments and everything else, but I don't want that warranty going bad. So. Well, even All so, right. even if, if you don't do your services at the dealership, if you do them yourself even, or outside, yeah. you know, a, a, an aftermarket place, all you have to do is save receipts showing that you did those services according to what the factory recommendation is, and your warranty is in effect. They will not void your warranty because you used outside services for your maintenance. And, and I also have a message that will make all the dealers and service departments out there mad at me, uh, including my own dealership, probably. But uh, the fact of the matter is, I've been a dealer for over 50 years, and I've never known a manufacturer. And I've had a lot of dealerships with a lot of different manufacturers. I've never known a manufacturer to not fulfill the warranty obligation because somebody missed a service or two services. Right. Or three services. Now, if you, if you drive your car for 30,000 miles yeah. and don't ever change the oil yeah. and the engine locks up, you're if probably you, not going to get the exactly. car. Exactly. If, right. if, <laughs> if you abuse the car to the point where the car self-destructs because you didn't put any oil in it, that's a different story. But uh, if you have a warranty issue that's not related to your service, like, like oil changes or you know, your air conditioning goes out, uh, they're not going to avoid your warranty because you didn't bring it in. So... Uh, but that's a great way to get you in the door, and I want to be sure that my dealership's not doing that. Sounds to me like so. If someone told you that your warranty was going to be voided because you didn't bring it in for service, uh, I needed to look into that. 
No, no, it, it was definitely not your dealership. Oh, good. The calls mm. sound like one of the telemarketer type things. Oh, okay. Maybe from maybe from Southeast Toyota or who knows what from. Really. But uh, but oh. um, on, a, on a positive note, we'll we'll have one other um, quick thing. The other day after we shopped at Costco, um, my girlfriend and I decided she wanted to go look at the um, Mercedes Benz SUVs. So we stopped at the dealership just down the street from y'all. Mm-hmm. And you would be very proud to know that everyone was wearing their mask. In fact, one gentleman that didn't have the mask on when they saw us coming into the dealership reached in his pocket huh. quickly to put the mask on. So your, um, your, your, your um, how should I say, um, word is out there and, and people are following it. And when I mentioned about Earl Stewart, surprisingly, it wasn't the normal, you know, ah, blah, blah, blah. they were all had very positive things to say about you. So hmm. it's nice that you're well received down there by some and hated by others. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they uh, just a little a story. When they first uh, opened that dealership, that's a relatively new Mercedes dealership. And uh, when they first opened it, uh, they they copied our uh, no hidden fees, and uh, they had a they had a, a, a dealer fee, hidden fee, and we mystery shopped them years ago when they first opened, and we you know we kind of went after them like we do dealers and when we mystery shop. And then after that, they dropped their uh, their dealer fee, and uh, and then after that's the good news. The bad news is about a year later they reinstated it. A lot of car dealers I that, that we've impacted in the South Florida market have dropped their hidden fees, but they can't make a living without it, and then they go reinstated. But interesting story. Thanks, Frank, for sharing that with us. Yeah, the one one salesman was named Mark. Was a, a truly respected you and your family. So. Right. Um, and, and what was interesting too, you go into his little um, office cubicle, and there was York peppermint patties, the soft peppermints, all from mm. Costco. Ooh. And then he says, "Oh, well, that's nothing." And he opens up his cabinet drawer where all the books and magazines. It was loaded with goodies. He says, "My customers will never go away hungry." So I said, <laughs> he, "He's an interesting guy, but very, very, um, very, very kind." And oh, it was even more important. The day we were there was a Friday. It was his day off, and he probably spent an hour and a half to two hours with Amory and myself on his day off. I mean, he's he's truly someone like, if he ever left Mercedes, I would say you you guys need to talk to him like that gentleman up in Stewart that's at the Ford dealer at Sim. Yeah. Well, thanks for saying anyway. nice things about Mark. I might try to hire him. There you go. <laughs> you all have a nice weekend. Thanks for um, straightening me out about the warranty stuff. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Frank. Oh, thank you. Thank you be, for care. being part of the show, Frank. Stay safe. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Give us a call toll-free at 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Remember, I have $50 for a second new lady caller this morning. Share your experience with us, or just give us a call and say hello, and uh, you can take advantage of uh, calling. If you call by 915, that's the shutoff, Uh, so... Take advantage, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. Now back to Stu, do you have more? Yeah, yeah I, could, I could spend the, the rest of the show. Oh, yeah, I could, I could take up the rest of the show doing this. Uh, the first one will go to Anne-Marie, who texted, this, texted us a great question. I think Earl will get a kick out of this, too. Good morning. Why do people kick the tires when looking for a new vehicle? Where did that come from? And that's a great question because I don't know, and uh, and I don't think people still kick tires anymore. But 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 people who but car dealerships dealers still refer to customers who aren't buying as tire kickers, meaning they're just going to walk on the lot and and poke around. But you know, but um, you got to know. That's funny that she should mention that because I did that the other day. I thought for sure I had a flat tire, so I get out of so my car, kicking? go walk up to the uh, front end, and I kick my tire. And <laughs> what, I don't know why. What, why do you do that? I don't know. It's just tradition. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I don't either. I, my guess is is what people do when they don't know what to do, and they're walking around. They want to look like they know something. So kicking a tire kind of looks like a, it's an authoritative mood, and maybe you're trying to see if it's got mud on it and we'll see how much shreds left. Oh, my but goodness. I, I cheated and I Googled it. <laughs> oh. It's a means of determining whether a vehicle is roadworthy and dates to the early days of trucking. With so many tires on one axle, a tire could look inflated but be flat because the other tires were holding it up. So you kicked all the tires to determine whether you had a flat. So okay. there. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> he takes it back. Earl takes that back. <laughs> when I was, no, I just said I didn't know. Google knows everything. Yeah, Google knows everything. When I was two years old, uh, Earl put me in a commercial uh, for Pontiac, and I wrote, drove around, the, rode around the lot in my tricycle. I was very cute, and I stopped in front of a probably a Grand Prix or something, and. Uh, or some Pontiac and got up and he kicked the tire <laughs> and then my <laughs> uncle handed me a big lollipop and I was famous for a little bit when I was in preschool <laughs> oh interesting story uh, do we have a YouTube we do I have a really good one here John Reed is asking why doesn't anyone talk about the hazardous waste from batteries from electric cars and I'm guessing he means from manufacturing them and also disposing of them yeah, I've heard something about that. I had a friend of mine call me the other day about about that, that there was more hazardous waste that comes from uh, battery disposal than comes from uh, nuclear or something. Or I mean, it was, you know, all these stats they throw back and forth. I don't know the facts on that. I, th I think that uh, I, I'm guessing, knowing Elon Musk and knowing technology, uh, this will be coped with uh, in some fashion. Of course, if you have a battery that lasts for a million miles, then you're not going to have very many batteries to throw away. but uh, Now that'll uh, make the difference, I yeah, think. Yeah. I don't know the facts on that. Anybody knows the facts on that? Uh, we could Google it, but uh, I think currently it's probably a lot bigger problem than it will be. Yeah, I guess um, recycling will be, play a bigger role of it. I'm sure the components will be able to yeah. repurpose for other things. I don't think they're going to throw giant Tesla batteries in the landfill. I mean, there's probably some good stuff in there that could, that could be used. Yeah. yeah. Um, text here, uh, Earl, don't you think... Uh, I think they're referring to something we talked about earlier. Earl, don't you think the reason car manufacturers know this and keep trickling on new tech and safety equipment to make us think our cars are obsolete after a year or two? I believe they have all this stuff already developed and are holding back to keep us wanting more, more often. No, that's not uh, accurate. I, I think that there's a race to uh, win the tech war, and I think that uh, the, uh, the winner will be the one that can come up with user-friendly uh, technical innovations uh, that would basically be hands-free. Uh, you should be able to get into a car and not have to have an uh, owner's manual this thick to read to learn how to operate your car. So the, 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 the winner, the manufacturer that wins the race will be the one that will have the most technically advanced car and the most user-friendly. And user-friendly, I never knew what that meant 20 years ago, huh. but when you have a device, yeah. right. like the iPhone. Right, here's, You're the user. Here, here's my iPhone. You want that device to be friendly this to you. Is, this is fairly complicated, and, uh, and yet uh, I learned how to use it. You have to. The guy that comes up with an iPhone that is so user-friendly, you don't have to learn how to use it. It's just right. you use it. A baby could use it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, no, uh, no, the, technology, the technology revolution is a reality, and it's going at warp speed, and it's crazy, and uh, uh, I don't think it's going to slow down, and I don't think anybody is holding back. I think they're probably, if anything, they're probably moving too fast. They're changing things that they haven't perfected and are not able to be learned by the buyers of the, mm -hmm. of the vehicles. Exactly. And Apple does that. Uh, Apple, there might be some tech that they have developed, but it's not, you know, it hasn't been road tested. Yeah. It's not reliable, so they kind of hold back until it really until, yeah. until it works well. Uh, this is for Rick. Uh, Rick, how long can a hybrid car run once the gas runs out? I mean, I know the hybrid system needs both a gas and motor and electric motor, but doesn't the hybrid um, doesn't the hybrid have an EV mode? So I mean, how long can it drive in EV mode without gas? I have first thing I'm going to say, folks, don't run your car out of gas. It's not good for it. Um, second thing, it's going to depend on the car but you might get as little as 10 miles to as much as 30 miles. But the most important factor, please do not run your car out of gasoline <laughs> because you can actually damage the car by doing that. Well, yep. let's, uh, let's, uh, let's Google that because I'm, I'm surprised that you only get uh, you know, up to 30 miles. I think that... Uh, well, it'll uh, depend on the state of charge of the hybrid battery at the time yeah. when it runs out. Yeah. yeah. I know that I had the, uh, the, uh, the Prius Prime, which is a plug-in one. I, get 20, mm -hmm. I had 22 miles on a, f a full charge. That was the total amount I could get. And yeah. I think they've increased it a little bit, but I'm not sure. Yeah. We have a first-time caller, and right. uh, her name is Lorraine. She's calling from Hope Sound. Good morning. 
Welcome to the show, Lori. Well, thank you. It's nice to be on. First of all, I'll start out by thanking all of you and your staff there in Earl Stewart and his wonderful program. And I'm just going to say how much I appreciate it. And I just have a comment about um, what I learned from your program in the last couple of years about OTD, out the door, and um, Never thought I'd be in a position to have to use it, but I was in a, my first time ever at Smith in February. My car, which I loved, it was a uh, 2007 Sonata with 47,000 miles on it. It was totaled. Um, by the grace of God, everybody was fine other than myself, and I've been sick, but um, I needed a car. When I got all sort of done, I ended up with $4,241 not much of the money to buy a car with, and um, I kept looking for a while and I had some help from my son who lives in Indianapolis and looked up some things for me. So I found a car, liked it, drove it, um, and it started out on the lot with $11,995. It was a 2013 um, Hyundai Elantra with 90,000 miles on it. And uh, I said, well, that's way, way, way out of my ballpark. And the said, was very, very nice, very knowledgeable, took me into his little cubicle, started doing figures, and before I knew it, a guy came in and said, well, this is our president, stay weekend, which it was. He said, um, this is uh, just been reduced to nine ninety five, which is a couple thousand dollars difference, and we can finance you in this thing. And I said, well... Lorraine, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but we're I having a Bluetooth. difficult time understanding you. Are you uh, Bluetooth? It sounds like. Are you on a uh, speakerphone or a different type of phone? Because we're having a difficult. You're kind of fading in and out. Um. Yes. Yeah, yes. I. Yes. I am. I only have. I only have one kind of a um, a, one kind of a phone and it's my cell phone. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, we didn't really get much of anything you said um, there. Is there any way you could uh, do us with uh, calls without the Bluetooth? Uh, when, maybe when you st when you pull over. Um, no, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm I am pulled over. I'm, oh. I'm sitting still. Okay. Yes, oh. I am sitting still. Um, I can take you off the speakerphone and put it up to my ear if that would help. That would probably it would. Might, it might help. It might help, okay, Lorraine. Try that. Let me try it. And we apologize, folks. Sometimes, uh, it, to, especially in the car, we have difficulty. Uh, sure. I would, is, that, is that better, sir? Oh, much better. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, my story was about getting a car. Found one that I wanted. Um, I had $4,241 to work with uh, because my car was totaled. And um, I had to use my own money, of course, for the rest of it. Um, I talked to my son about my finances, and he borrowed me some money. I had $7,500. That was it, period. We started at 11, 11, and then with President's Day sale, they went to nine ninety five, and And then two or three people came in after one. It was very kind, very knowledgeable, I mean, very nice just saying that we can't do this, we can't do that, but we can do this, we can finance this, we can get you a new car uh, for payments. And I said, well, I said, you know, you've been most kind. Um, I said, let me think about it. So I went back the next day, and the guy that I've been working with was so so nice, and he told me right from the start when I said, listen, I said, um, I've done some research, and I said, I have an OTD price, and that's what it's going to be. <laughs> so... Just before I walked out the second day, a gentleman came in, and three other people had come in, and long story short, I got the car for $7,500 out the door because they, they said, you know, we have these dealer fees, we have to have them, or we blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's all because of you guys that I was able to do that, and I tell my story to my friends, and they all say they want me to come with them whenever they buy so. Well, Thank you so much. Congratulations, Lauren. Yeah. I, I love to hear those good stories, and I appreciate you sharing it with us, and the fact that you learned something from our show makes it even nicer. Yes. We really appreciate it. And uh, I, well, I, I, I couldn't I, have said it any I, uh, better. That experience that you shared with us will go very far for other ladies, and it will encourage them to give us a call. So thank you so much, Lorraine. You're welcome. And I just wanted to say that um, that is true for women. Um, I lost my husband on Christmas a few years back, so I've been on my own. And being in my 
mid seventies. Um, this was all new to me, and I had been, you know, I was listening to the program. So we, uh, I just, I just kind of was always in the back of my mind, and I heard so much about OTD. I never even knew what it was until my husband explained it to me, and until I started reading about it and his columns in the in the paper that I get, what I used to get. So thank you very much, and God bless all of you, and be safe and be happy, and God bless America. Thank you, Lorraine. Well, that's Please nice. stay that's, in touch with us. That's one of the nicest calls we've had. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, uh, I really uh, uh, it makes it, it makes me feel better about this show because you wonder sometimes uh, it, are we what we're saying is it being applied, and when we hear a story like that, it's probably great. Okay. Great information. Knowledge is power, and it goes a long way. Again, thank you, Lorraine. Okay, Stu, let's get back to the text. Okay, Robbie and Stuart is following up on the call uh, that we took earlier. It says, good morning. The lady who called in earlier about the 24-year-old daughter being taken advantage of at a car dealer, is this still con a concern at a highly reputable car dealer like you, Earl? Are the salespeople trained for this? Thank you. And once again, that's from Robbie and Stuart. Robbie, I love, I love your, your question because it's a tough question. And uh, the easy answer would be, no, that could never happen at my dealership. The fact of the matter is uh, I have about 30 salespeople. Uh, we have a pretty stable sales force. Um, I stay real close to my customers and I usually hear complaints when there is one. Um, I, I know that it rarely happens at my dealership, uh, but when you have a total of 170 employees, which is how many I have, and 30 of those are salespeople, then if you add another dozen that are service salespeople, that's 42 salespeople. Uh, uh, there are people that are taken advantage of. We're a little bit different in our dealership because we don't pay on commission. We don't pay a percentage of the uh, price that the salesperson sells the car for. So uh, I set the price on the car. Stu sets the price on the car. We put our lowest price on all of our cars. Uh, so that limits the temptation uh, for people on commission to try to raise the price. Every other car dealership you go into, uh, the salespersons get 25%. If he can raise the price of the car that you want to buy by $1,000, he can put $250 more in his pocket than his normal commission. If he can raise it $2,000, then he's talking $500 more. So it's an adversarial relationship. But the truth is that I have had complaints on my salespeople that, that uh, irritated me. And there's always a rotten apple in the barrel. And you have to stay on top of it, which Stu and I, the family dealership, Nancy, and uh, my other son, uh, you know, we stay on top of it. And that's what we have to do. But, yep, we make mistakes. And when we do, we try to make it right. But there are no perfect dealerships. And no. Be careful. Buyer beware. Absolutely. 877-960-9960. Uh, or you can text us at 772-772. 497-6530. We're going to get back to Stu in just a second, but first we're going to go out to Dallas where Justin is calling us. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. How are you? We're well, thank you. I wanted to call in and just say thank you so very much. I've been watching your program every Saturday from Dallas because I was interested in buying a car. Cool. And sure enough, every single thing that you said on your program came to pass. Huh. They had they had a phony Monroney. Huh. Oh. It, it wasn't on the car itself. He had it at his desk. Uh -huh. And it was the nitrous. It was, uh, they wanted me to pay for the insurance for them to ship the car, even though they already had it, $400. Oh. Oh, Something called an IPAC, I-P-A-C, Five hundred dollars. He uh. couldn't even tell me what it meant. Uh. That's like a counterfeit <laughs> <And> iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he wanted to charge me for all these weird things. And then at the very end, he said, "I asked him what's the internet price." He said it's forty-two thousand. And then with everything out the door, it was forty-seven. And when I looked on TrueCar, it was going for thirty-seven five. Uh. Five days later, I emailed him and said, "I only want it for thirty-eight. And sure enough, twenty-four hours after that. He said he could do it for 38 Wow. I'll tell you, what, what a story. I don't know if I want to buy it, though, because <laughs> I don't trust the dealership at this point. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, uh, your story, uh, Justin. I'm so happy 
uh, that you learned from our show. Uh, we got two in a row. Boy, I tell you what, Ew, amazing. I'm, I'm, over, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, I, I think of, think of the it's victims compelling. that aren't educated <laughs> to buying, and and they would pay a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars more than you paid simply because yeah. they weren't informed. So, uh, what a wonderful story. Thank you for calling. Thank you for the service you do for everyone. Thank oh, you very much. Thank you so much, Justin. Please give us a call again, 877-960-9960, or you can text us at 772-497-6530. And don't forget, you can pick up, uh, you can go to Earl on Cars and read his latest column, Competition is Car Dealer's Kryptonite. Mm -hmm. Wow, is that an interesting uh, read, uh, just like so many others are that you can pull up from the past so uh, take advantage of that, EarlHunCars.com. Now back to Stu. Let's jump over to some anonymous feedback. Uh, first one that came in, uh, simple question. Are used cars better to negotiate a price? Uh, no. Uh, you know, really, uh, used cars are more difficult to negotiate a price because there's no two used cars that are exactly the, the same. And the, the smart car dealer uses that to his advantage. Um, when you stop and think about it, uh, a new car... A new uh, Honda Civic is a new Honda Civic is a new Honda Civic. Whether you buy it from dealer A, B, C, or whether you buy it in Paducah, Kentucky, or uh, Key West, Florida, so it's the it's a it's a commodity. It's like copper or gold or silver, and uh, everybody has the same cost. It's just a question of how much more over their cost they can sell you the car for. So uh, used cars. You know, different owners, different mileages, different maintenance care. Uh, has it been an accident? Has it been in a flood? Uh, you, you really don't know. So it's very difficult to negotiate a good price on a used car. That's the reason the, the average profit on a used car is higher to the dealer than it is on, than the average new car price, which is counterintuitive. Yeah. And on our mystery shopping reports, we encounter that a lot. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of dealers will say they're one price on a used car, and they actually they are. Uh, new cars is a different story. Yeah. Okay, um, here's more anonymous feedback. I'm trying to buy a car with credit problems. From experience, I've been burnt by the car dealership pressuring me to take the car home right away. Ten years ago, I also ran into, gave in to this and was called to say I needed to keep bringing more and more papers. Then I was told I had to do a new contract and come up with more money. The interest rate went up and the price went up, but I had little choice but to do it. Uh, this time around in 2020, I'm running into the same thing. How do I get through this without the same thing happening again? Best thing is to uh, deal with your bank or credit union. Uh, if you can't borrow the money from your bank or credit union, then you have a real challenge, and then you have to find um, a dealer that is going to be honest and transparent. And that's a, that's a big, you know, the people with um, uh, marginalized credit, bad credit, uh, they are one of the biggest victims of car dealers. Um, first place, never assume you have bad credit. You might think you have bad credit, but you would be surprised that lenders today, and there are lenders that will make a loan to a person with a lower credit than 20 years ago they didn't ever think about. Uh, so that's the reason you always check with your bank or credit union. Check with a couple of credit unions, a couple of banks, and then uh, shop around for the best deal you can get. Yeah. Once, once you admit you cannot get financed by anybody else, the dealer owns you. Yeah. Because what the dealer will then do is he will sell you the car that he can't sell to anybody else, and all you want is transportation. And uh, he'll charge you as much money as he possibly can for interest, and he'll charge you a fee that he's not supposed to charge you, but special finance lenders lenders to people with bad credit have a fee. It can be $2,000 that is not supposed to be added to the price of the car. The dealer is supposed to pay that, but he passes that along to you. So it gets very, very expensive when you have to admit and, 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 and everybody after investigation, yeah. you say, I got terrible credit. You're going to be victimized. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hmm. The uh, other, what happened also to, to you was what you know, Earl's called, uh, and written, written blogs about this, it's called a yo-yo um, or a spot delivery. Yeah. Uh, they let you take the car home thinking that you have an approval, but that you probably don't have an approval from the bank, and so they're going to 
uh, they're going to change the terms of your agreement um, to get you to say to get approval. They'll say the bank called. No. In some cases, they really did. They they had no idea what the bank was going to say. Also, in any case, even if you have bad credit or good credit, do a little research before you go in to find out, you know, what is a, a good rate for good credit, what's a good rate for medium, what's a bad credit. Because they'll lie. Even with people with good, with good credit, you'll say, oh, here's a 6% loan. That's great. But right now, interest rates are near zero, and you can get mm -hmm. a new car. It used to be that a 600 yeah. Beacon score was a cutoff. Now, like, a 525 uh, Beacon score, five, 550 well, Beacon well, score. Well, people get, a, get approved down in, in the low fives or even yeah. in, into the fours, actually. Um, yeah. Those are the ones where they have this big bank fee. Yeah. So um, if, you, if yeah. you have a if you have a beacon score, you know over 500. Used to be it had to be over 600, and the lenders are smarter and uh, they're more careful, and therefore they can afford to buy deeper. We say it of the business where they can buy people with lower credit scores. So uh, don't give up and shop around. Always shop around because if you just go into one dealer, you will really be victimized. Yeah. Shop with several. That's, that's what dealers. Mama told me. Yeah. Always shop around. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Earl, did you just say salespeople will make 25% of the price of the car? That is insane. How many cars do a typical salesman sale, sell? Are, are most car salesmen rich? I said the, of the profit on the car, they, if they can increase the price by $1,000, that's increasing the profit on the car, they get 25% of the profit. So if a dealer cost on a car is $40,000, and they sell it for $50,000, then they make $2,500. It's a lot of money to sell one car. Mm -hmm. More anonymous feedback. Earl, can you tell us more about your educational background? I heard that you are a physicist. Uh, I majored, in, I got my bachelor's in physics at the University of Florida in 1963, and I got my master of science at Purdue in 1964 in industrial administration. Very good, I knew that. Yes. Um, Anonymous feedback. When we have 100 percent, if when we have 100 percent all autonomous vehicles, will drinking be permitted by the passengers? This would be very convenient if permitted. Thank you. Interesting story. I uh, hmm. I kind of doubt it, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> we've heard it. You know, very, yeah. very convenient. You it know, if, it, 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 if you had a, if you had an autonomous car. And, you know, electric, yeah, they said car. 100 percent autonomous. They was, in yeah. order to stop one over here, but the, you, a drunk can still do things in an electric car. If you, if if they could create a car for drunks, that when you got in uh, the car uh, and programmed in the destination, you couldn't change it. Uh, yeah. Then you know, you see what I'm saying. Or if you grab the wheel, <laughs> it didn't. Well, I'm thinking because I know that at some point, you know, there's going to be autonomous no. taxi cabs and yeah. autonomous rideshare. It have to be a drunk-proof car. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah, thing. yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to sit in the back seat behind a cage <laughs> and then drink all you want. Remember, folks, you're going to hear it here. This yeah. is breaking news. Yes. Please, don't touch that dial. That's crazy. <laughs> all right. All right, this is jumping all over the place. Uh, just a compliment. Love your your autumn background photo. Earl doesn't know what's behind him. That's always no. a surprise to him. John, you know, it's, it's green. Beautiful. I don't see anything. It's green. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> I, I was going to say something about that earlier. It is just gorgeous. It is. I love all those autumn colors. It's making me feel like we're in fall, even though the it's autumn leaves. Really? Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Thank but you. They have a the autumn leaves. There, there's a real <laughs> question. And gold. See, I told Turns you yesterday. Away, the day is growing. No. <laughs> I told lost, you yesterday you were control. gonna you were gonna break into song yes. because you break into song when you do the yeah. you know the international sunrise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there actually is a question attached to the the compliment for the background photo. Uh, there seems to be a trend towards glossy piano black interior trim. It is a magnet for fingerprints, dust, dust and scratches. A deal breaker for me because I keep my new cars for many years. Uh, does feedback from dealerships have any influence on changing it? It does, and Rick can address what is known as a DPR. Dealers have a, a reporting system, at least Toyota does, where if I as a technician have a customer come in and say, this is a problem on my car, even if it's something that they just don't like, I can file a report to Toyota called a dealer product report, and as soon as it goes in, it immediately gets inspected by uh, higher-ups, engineers, and that. And in some cases, those reports can wind up on the factory floor with changes being made on the car within days. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's, it's amazing some of the times that they have told us how our individual reports have actually caused changes in the assembly line within days to change something. Yeah. And others are simply, they will take it into account for the designers for the next generation or for the next redesign on the car. I suspected uh, for a while Toyota was putting, I believe it or not, was putting a lot of chrome trim on the interior. Um, I was driving an Avalon, and the sun hit it. It became, to, for me, a safety issue. It suddenly, it, like the sun was mm -hmm. in your car. The following year, there wasn't any chrome trim, so I, I imagine they probably started to get feedback because it was they pretty They got a crazy. lot of people said, hey, we don't like this. Yeah. Um, going more anonymous feedback. Uh, is there a way dealer websites on dealer websites to see the actual inventory when seeking a particular model and color? You should be able to, but um, I'm there is. Let me. I'm sorry for jumping on your toes, Earl. Most reputable dealers uh, will show their inventory. Um, it's usually attached to their their management system. So, as they sell the car, it comes off the website. When the new car comes in stock, it automatically appears. But be aware, there are car dealerships, particularly ones with multiple locations, which will list all of their inventory. They could have ten stores, and they could list all their cars on their website. And it might appear that they might have a thousand new cars, but you might find out that the one that you want is a thousand miles away mm -hmm. at another location. So, um, yes, technically, but you got to be careful. Make sure you're looking at the the right location. Okay, let me. I'm, I'm going to jump in here, interrupt everybody, unless we have a phone caller waiting, because I've got something that I want to do that uh, I thought long and hard about on the show, and uh, I um, I was contacted by a, a reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, about a few weeks ago, and uh, I get contacted by a lot of reporters. I have a reputation of uh, having a big mouth, and I, I've been on CNN, I've been on Fox News, I've been on in the Wall Street Journal, the Harada. New York Times. I mean, I, uh, everybody calls me because I tell it like it is. I tell uh, reporters what what uh, the truth is in my eyes, and uh, I don't get a lot of uh, calls from local reporters. Uh, but I, I do get some, and I had one from Channel 10, was that the WPLG something in uh, Fort Lauderdale or Miami? You're identifying now. Uh, a while back. Well, no, that's not the one that I talked about. Uh, I, had a, I had one from a TV station, South Florida TV station, a few days ago. And the reporter called me and said, look, I've been reading your blogs, and I've been reading your uh, radio, listening to your radio show about the hidden fees. and." Uh, I'd like to do a, uh, a, a TV uh, expose on this, and uh, would you be willing to cooperate? And I said, sure, I would, I'd love to, and this is all an email. I've got the emails right here. I, I was going to read the emails, but uh, I won't read them, it's too long. Uh, I, I'm saying this to make a point. First of all, I'm not going to name uh, the television station. I'll, I will say it's a major uh, South Florida TV station, a major affiliate of a major network, and it's so very, very important. If I gave you the name of the owner of this uh, television network, you'd know who I was talking about. But I don't want to get the reporter into trouble. And I certainly wouldn't mention the reporter's name. Um, I, when I responded in the email, I said, you better go to your editor in the advertising department and the radio and the TV station because car dealers advertise very heavily on television. And uh, it's a lot of revenue. And if you offend the car dealers in the area about hidden fees, you're going to lose that advertising revenue. He says, I'll check and I'll do that. Well, well I didn't hear from him uh, for a week, and I went back and I said, what happened? He says, well, you were right. Uh, they stopped the story. He says, I'm very disappointed. Well, this has happened a lot of times. And uh, so what I'm saying to uh, the journalists and the reporters and the media whether you're radio, television. By the way, this radio station right here, God bless them, and for their courage and their ethics to allow this show to exist. Because there are a lot of car dealers that advertise on this radio station. And the owner of this station has the courage to let Earl Stewart on Cars exist for a long time. I was fired, Nancy and I were fired, at Seaview Radio uh, years ago because the car dealers ganged up and said, we're going to boycott CV Radio if you don't get, a, get rid of Earl and Nancy. Yep. And, and they did get rid of us, and it took us a year before the CV Radio went broke, yeah. and the new owners came in and bought this station. And uh, as I say, thank you for having the courage. Also, for Hometown News, 
also for the Florida Weekly. There are journalists out there that have the courage to say the truth. But why don't the major television stations and radio stations and newspapers have the courage? This reporter wanted to do an ex expose of the hidden fees of car dealers all over South Florida, and they wanted to go to, he said, in his words, maybe we can embarrass mm -hmm. Ashley Moody into doing something. Yeah. And his boss said no. The editor probably was told by the advertising department, because the advertising department and the television and radio station runs the show. Well, maybe, uh, I understand, you got to make a profit. If you don't make a profit, you go broke. And uh, what is better to have a radio station or a television station that tells some of the truth, or you don't have a television station at all? I get it. But I don't have a solution. I mean, I, I, no. whatever happened to journalistic ethics and honesty? And anybody out there, if you're a manager of a radio, TV, uh, newspaper, whatever you are, think about this. Here is a wrong that's being foisted on the car buyers of South Florida and all over Florida, and nothing gets done about it because you protect the car dealers because they spend so damn much money on advertising. Absolutely. That's the end of my rant. Yeah, I love it. I really do. Right. And, uh, you know, the proof's in the pudding. Turn on your TV. Are you listening? Are you hearing? Are they giving you the truth? That's all I have to say you about it. You see a lot of advertisements, don't you? A lot of car advertisements. Which, uh, which are the biggest joke? The lawyers or the car dealers in their advertising? I'm not sure which. Give, give me or a Or the politicians. I, I let the there's no This is hands down. The politicians win the clown contest yes. right now. And then number car, two would be dealers. the lawyers. Yeah. And number three would be the car dealers. Yeah. It, it just makes you, it makes you want to just turn the TV off. You know, I want to mention real quick, uh, Linda uh, called last week, and she was sharing with us that, you know, she had a, uh, a, a little, uh, her husband was driving the car, uh, the Highlander, and uh, we gave her some advice, and she took it, and uh, she's already cutting a check uh, to uh, Allstate, and uh, she's going to get that bumper fixed. So thank you for listening, Linda, and thanks for taking our advice. We, we hope to hear from you again. You don't call very often. All right. Okay. Uh, we actually um, so we uh, obtained a photograph of Alan's coronavirus haircut. Um, That's think, beautiful. Yeah, I think Earl has it on his phone if he wants to show it to the camera. I was only kidding when I said it was going to try and resemble the coronavirus, but apparently uh, Alan went to a specialty uh, a salon, I think. Um, uh, that's and right. And they worked out something. Um, uh, Paul Earl's finding that on his phone. Oh, there we are. <laughs> this is kind of an inside story. Most people don't know uh, Alan we, Napier. He's uh, we, we, uh, he's, we love you, Alan. He's my mentally disturbed body shop manager. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there he is. Sorry. It's beautiful, Alan. Bring your car well in done. and let Alan take care of your car for you. He just killed our body shop business. He's a very uh, skilled uh, person. You know, he's he will greet you with wearing that haircut. <laughs> All right. Um, That's going to go viral. <laughs> and I'm, gonna start, I'm starting to catch the giggles because uh, the next anonymous feedback it starts off by saying, Happy Thanksgiving, all. All right. Uh, we're not even at Halloween yet. So, uh, but thank you for the, for the sentiment. The question is, is the infotainment software in-house designed or outsourced? Lexus seems to be worse than Toyota as far as ease of use. And Rick, I'm sure it could be the guy to chime in on that. Well, it's generally uh, from the manufacturer of the radio. Uh, Pioneer, Fujitsu 10, JVC, whatever company has designed that particular radio usually gets their software from yeah. whatever source. Yeah, the other manufacturers do not build radios. Yeah. So that, that software is probably going to come from another outside company to the radio developer, and then they're going to set it up and have it integrated to the car. Well, all right. Uh, to uh, all of you that are listening, you can pick yourself up a um, consumer report, and they are talking about the best and the worst car infotainment in uh, systems. So there you go. That's great. Interesting. September edition. Very good. All right. Uh, anonymous feedback. Great question here. Is there a way for potential buyers doing their homework to find out if there's extra dealer incentives or dealer cash to sweeten a possible deal? 
And the answer is, for the most part, yeah. If you go to truecar.com, um, there's a lot of sites that will get that together, KBB, Edmonds. But if you go to truecar.com, um, navigate through to the make and model that you want to get. It usually will accurately list the incentives, whether it's um, a, a cash rebate for the customer, consumer cash, or if it's dealer cash, the, the, the kind of incentive that can be hidden from the consumer. So great question, but I recommend TrueCar to find that. Yeah, they used to uh, publish that in Automotive News, which is a trade journal, and I think there was so much heat from the dealers saying, don't put this in writing because we're afraid somebody will get a hold of a copy of Automotive News. I didn't realize that that uh, True Car did that, so that's great. Uh, is there any other source? Uh, yeah. Edmonds or uh, yeah. Kelly Blue Book? Um, Kelly Blue Book um, and Edmonds both um, will do that when you do their pricing thing. I think it's a little bit more cumbersome. You kind of, kind of, it's a little bit harder to find where you're going because they're, they're these huge sites. Um, True Car is right to the point. You put pick your year make model, and then you find your deals. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can find them in other yeah. other other sources. I think Rick's well. got a YouTube here. It looks like it's a good one. Donovan Lewis is asking. Why doesn't it all run for office in Florida only to get a bill passed to end dealer fees? Everyone can understand a 1,000 dealer fee is a scam. I got some good answers for that question because I get asked a lot why do I don't run for office. My favorite answer, my funniest one is I could never pass the background check, uh, which is probably true. I mean, I, uh, as a recovering car dealer, I got some things in my past that I am ashamed of. Uh, uh, the, 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 the real reason I don't run for office is that, uh, and I, I don't say I'm a bad American, don't say I'm anti-democracy, but the fact of the matter is you have to be a liar to get elected to office. Uh, uh, the, in our system today, when you run for office, if you tell the truth, you can't get elected. And so you either have to withhold the truth or modify the truth and I just, um, I'm, how many of you know recovering alcoholics, recovering drug addicts, I'm a recovering car dealer? You know, we tend to be extreme. So I, when I recovered, when I got into recovery, I became an extreme person in the sense that I can't stand to tell the lie anymore. I can't tell the, stand to withhold the truth. And uh, it gets me in a lot of trouble with a manufacturer, Toyota, sometimes with... Uh, other uh, factors, uh, you know, people are waiting to sue me. Um, so I could never get elected. If I thought I could get elected and be honest, I probably would. I don't think I'd run for president, but I might run for something, you know, mayor. Mayor of Jupiter Inland Colony. Yeah, right. <laughs> You'll never do that again. I think yeah. you were president of a condo association yeah. once. You did yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to get you know off the subject, but isn't it sad that? To get elected today, you cannot tell the truth. Yeah. It's a sad fact. Anyway. It's been going on forever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have an interesting mystery shopping report coming up and at uh, Southern 441 Nissan. And we would love for you to participate in, uh, well, uh, giving us a grade. Uh, pass them, fail them, uh, whatever. And that helps us to create a, a good list and a, and a bad list of these dealers. Yep. Uh, so 772-497-6530. That's okay. where you can go. Well, I yak too we much. Get, we get, we got time in. for one more. We got one last. We'll be okay. all caught up with our. Okay, I'll, I'll read fast. It's a. Uh, it's from a uh, potential competitor. Once, how does one open up a new car dealership? If I were to open up a Toyota store, how much would I need, and what is the process? Are there many new dealerships opening up these days? Great show. Keep it up, guys. South Florida costs you at least fifty million for a for a good Toyota dealership. There you go. That's okay. pretty succinct. Let's go. Mr. Shop of Southern Four Forty One Nissan. For the last two weeks, we focused on bait and switch car dealer advertising. We mystery shopped Wall Street twice. First with Agent Thunder, our male agent, and Agent Lightning, our female agent. So cool having a male and female to send out. Wall Street was advertising a new 2020 Jeep Grand, Grand Cherokee uh, with a payment of just $189 a month. Both of our agents experienced similar treatment, which was somewhat surprising. They were told that to get the low payment, they would need to qualify for a military rebate and a special Realtors Association rebate. Other texts were used as well, including statements that the ad car had been sold. On the second mystery shop, Agent Lightning, female, was pressured to buy a red vehicle, even though she insisted no red. She said, the only color I don't like is red, and they tried to sell her a red car. 
unbelievable. We placed a Wallace Jeep on our do not recommend list uh, two weeks ago after Agent Thunder's investigation. We were sad to do this concerning all of Wallace's dealerships were recommended by us. So Wallace is one of the best car dealers out there. Uh, Bill Wallace is a good man and he's an honest man and we felt bad, but he, he's got too many dealerships. He can't stay on top of all the dealerships and there you go. But in a dramatic reversal, we, we return uh, to the to the recommended list, put Walls back on the list after Agent Lightning's visit, having performed marginally better, still had too many glitches, but we, we let Wallace squeak by with a D. After all that, we decided to move on from the bait and switch ad theme and try something new. However, during our weekly reconnaissance of car dealer advertising, we stumbled on an offer that we couldn't ignore. Southern 441 used to be Royal Palm. Mm -hmm. um, Southern 441 Nissan online ad for a new 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport with a low, low payment of $87 a month. I mean, you know, the old too good to be true. Well, there, wow. it is. there it is. As is the case with really low payment ads, we have a good idea of the catch. A big down payment, huge usually, unobtainable rebates like are you a farmer, are you a uh, veteran, or you, uh, you know, whatever. This ad, however, was just a little trickier. If you could get trickier, it was. The headline read, no pay, no pay drive away. No pay drive away. Now, what does that tell you? You can drive away, and you don't have to pay. Right. Uh, you know, which implied a sign and drive, same thing. No money, don't reach for your wallet, your checkbook, you get in the car, and you go home, no money out of pocket. Uh, no security deposit. I mean, that's how, how certain can I be that I don't have to come up with cash? I think you skipped part. Oh, what did I skip? Uh, below the main headline. The oh, yeah, below the, you know, I, I was just ad-libbing. So ah, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> uh, no money down, no payments till 2021, no security deposit. That nails the last nail in the coffin. I don't have to pay a nickel. I can just drive this car away for $87 a month. So that's pretty bizarre, pretty absurd, but... There are people that believe this stuff, folks. I mean, they're still in business, right? There are some people that believe this stuff. That made it pretty clear there was nobody done required to get the $87 payment. Sounds great, but of course, uh, there was a small matter. I like that, the small matter of the fine print. Thank you. That's a, <laughs> that is funny. Small, fine print. Get it? Yeah. Here's a, here's a fine print. Plus tax tag title, $899 dealer fee. $3,777 do it signing. <laughs> hey, what about no pay, no drive? No, right. no pay, drive away. 3777 do it signing. 12,000 miles uh, per year, zero security deposit required with approved credit. So we won't read the rest of it. Uh, basically, uh, oh, and some, some of the fine print was on a 2020 Rogue, not even the car we were coming in on. Uh, so it was a finance deal on a 2020 Titan truck. I theorize that a lot of dealers do this. They like, to they like to glom a lot of fine print. If you see too much fine print, your mind just fogs over and you'll say, I'm not going to read it. If you have a little fine print, you might squint and try to read it. Yeah. But when you have two paragraphs of fine print, you say, forget about it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Too overwhelming. Uh, this ad was confused and confusing. We sent Agent Lightning in to figure things out for us. Okay, here's a report. I opened the showroom door. I opened the showroom door at 9 a.m. Immediately greeted by Marcio, Mauricio, 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 yeah, a mask-wearing salesman. I like that. Who was that mask man? He offered me an air fist pump, which I reciprocated. Mauricio asked how we could help, and I shared the ad. I'd come in on the new 2020 Nissan Rogue Sport for just $87 a month. Right away, Mauricio sought to discredit the ad by warning that a big down payment and uh, other eligibility would be required to get the advertised payment. He also said there were other add-ons as well as introducing their, uh, including their dealer fee. Now, here's a guy that's been through the, the wars, Mauricio, uh, works there, and everybody comes in the door at uh, Southern 441 Nissan has seen one of these ads. And so they just, right up front, Mauricio says, ain't gonna happen, you know. Uh, you have to qualify. You have to look at the fine print. I went with the flow and said, let's, say, well, let's see what we can work out. A lot of people just say, I'm out of here, and they run for the car. But uh, I went with the flow. 
Uh, Moore said he'd be right back, advised me to read the fine print. <laughs> now, you're in the dealership, now you read the fine print, which I had on my phone. He left me in the showroom, and in the spot we'd sit t talking. You know, the one good thing about phones is you can, you can increase the fine yeah. print, yeah. He returned five minutes to inform me that he had no more inventory of the Nissan Rogue's Sport S models. Okay, here we are. The ad car, we don't have any. Right. All right? Uh, that's, that's not good. That's bad enough. Yeah. Uh, like the one he had. He said he'd be happy to call me when one came in, adding he thought there were about 95. Uh, that's crazy. Or so arrived in the coming weeks. Ain't going to happen.com. No. no. You don't get that's 95. A one... One, we, one model. We don't even stock 95 Camrys. It doesn't and happen, stuff. right. I told him that I couldn't wait and I needed a vehicle with super low payment immediately. I showed him another Southern 441 Nissan I found uh, with my phone, a new 2020 Nissan Sentra for just $97 a month, another 10 bucks a month. Mauricio said he'd find one to drive and asked me if I had any color preference. I said I want a silver one. He left to find the car and the keys telling me to meet him out front, and when he pulled up, I stood, I stood in the show and waited. We hadn't sat at a desk yet. Mauricio pulled in a silver Sentra, found one, silver, MSRP of 20650 and there was an addendum for $1,973 for either an appearance. For an, no, it's just an appearance package. appearance package, yeah. We went on a test drive that covered about three miles. Mauricio focused on and described the safety features. Uh, he received a phone call from his wife, only lasted a minute. He directed me back to the store. We found his desk, prepared to review the deal he had for me. As we were just sitting down, Mauricio told me to ask me for my social security number. That's kind of strange. I mean, fill it out, but you know, when someone looks you in the eye and says, what's your social security <laughs> number, it's kind of scary. It's That's like, very scary. It's thing. like You just scared me when you said that. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, what size underwear do you wear? I mean, it's a personal question, right? I, mean, uh, I told him that I was not ready to let him run my credit. I needed to see the numbers first. I assured him that my credit score was in the mid-700s. Mauricio didn't accept my word and wanted to know how I knew my score. Uh, here we have not only so old school, but a, a, a aggressive, a tough guy. Mauricio is a tough guy. Uh, I don't like tough guys. Um, I told him I subscribed to a service that keeps me up to date on three credit bureaus. I said, I keep a close eye on my, oh, I just said that. This seemed to satisfy him. He grabbed his clipboard, a cup of coffee, and went to a small assemblage of sales managers behind some glass. Uh, at least they're protecting themselves from the COVID virus. I watched Mauricio interact with the manager talking and drinking coffee for 20 minutes. This astounds me, the, the length of time Not good. that they will waste your waste of your time. You're the, you're the buyer, I'm the buyer. 20 minutes. Sit there and HMI line. Said, described the score as not, not busy. She, yeah. I think she was yeah. the only customer at the time. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. He returned with a worksheet that uh, showed only a payment grid, different payments based on varying down payments. There was no price breakdown or any other indication of other fees, so worthless um, for me to uh, ponder. There was no specific payments either, only ranges. 36 month lease, $5,500 down payment, 103 to 113. That's a wide range. With $6,000 down, the payment was 89 to 99. With $6,500 down, the payment was 74 to 84. Big, big down payments. I told them the payments looked great, but I would need to see an itemized breakdown of what I was actually paying for the car. He said I'd be paying my down payment plus the total of all my payments. At the end of the lease, I could buy the car and keep it or turn it back. I mean, that's a smoke and mirrors thing. Uh, I reiterated that I needed an itemized breakdown and asked to see a purchase option. Mauricio seemed annoyed. Uh, I mean, just not only is he aggressive, he's, just a, he's not a good salesperson because uh, you don't look mean. You've got to look happy. I mean, if you're going to screw a customer, make them like you. Yeah. Don't, don't anger a customer. This is like one of Earl's old sales meetings. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> listen, listen. You got to win over the customer. You got to learn how to smile if when you kill. If, if you're going to slam dunk a customer and make, if you're going to make a ten grand slam dunk, they got to love you. You better get a hug afterwards. They got to love you. Uh, here's another old saying. I digress. We haven't got time. No, I, I can't a help kiss myself. Kiss on the cheek. 
We used to say in the old days, I know it was you. the customer that you make the most money on is the happiest customer. The customer that comes in and chisels you and nickels and dimes you and, and makes you sell the car near your cause, he never stops complaining. The chiseler. But the little old lady that comes in and you sell her the car and make a $10,000 profit over sticker price, she never complains. So all we're trying to do is have more happy customers. Right. By selling, that's your job. <laughs> that's your job is to make as much money as you can because the, the ones that you lay away, they never complain. That's right. Now you remember you heard it here first. You pull yourself together. And you want to know why I won't <laughs> run for political office? That's why I won't run for political office. But anyway, I digress. Um, FADA will uh, will endorse your opponent. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay. He returned. Oh, he's the there. purchase option. He returned in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. He yeah. showed me $5,250 discount from MSRP, which brought the selling price to 15400 Then he added, I digress so much, this is um, Royal Palm, not Royal Palm, it's Southern 441 Nissan that we're in, uh, shopping. Uh, and then he added a $1,973, $1,973 appearance package, which is just BS. Uh, uh, from the addendum sticker. Next came $345 in taxable fees. Remember, taxable fees are hidden fees. So right now, the toll goes up. We got 1973 plus 345, $899 dock fee. And then you got your sales tax, $102 non-tax fees. So we had a total of $3,217 in bogus fees. That's a lot of dealer fees, folks. That's a lot of hidden fees. $3,217 uh, $217 in bogus fees. So it makes your real discount from SRP uh, $1,800. The least payments were the same, and below that he totaled up the down payment and all 36 monthly payments to the sum of $9,208. What he said was, that's what you're paying for the car. Well, that's what you're renting the car for. You're not paying you it for the car. car. Right. You're renting it. A lease is not a payment, and you don't own anything. You've got a bunch of rent receipts. After 36 months, you got 36 rent receipts, and they own the car. You don't. I objected to the appearance package, but Mauricio said it came pre-installed. And that's a the, that's the sin and the guilt. When you pre-install something knowing that they can, <coughs> you can't take it off, and the products that you're charging them for are near worthless. You might not be able to take it off, but you could. You can charge them what they're worth. What they're worth. It's got window worth. tints and yeah. pinstripes. You pay 150 bucks, you're good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he said the window tint was guaranteed for life. Well, that's good. Uh, uh, he went on to say how amazed he was with the deal his manager put together way below MSRP. I said I would speak with my financial advisor about it and get back to him. I took pictures of the worksheet. Name Mauricio, I'm surprised that he allowed uh, me to take pictures of the worksheet, and I left. Here's a note, 50% of the employees visible to me wear masks. That means 50% did not wear masks. I tried to find some hand sanitizer. At the test drive, th three of them were empty. I found one with sanitizer in it. So careless with COVID. We should have that as a designation. CC, careless with COVID. Not, not COVID certified. Yeah. So here we are, bait and switch. Uh, uh, I go back to the no pay drive away, ain't gonna happen.com, no money down, a lie. And uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, as I go before, the Federal Trade Commission says you can't put anything in the fine print that substantially changed the selling price of the car. And this substantially changes the selling price of the car. So it's illegal, it's unconscionable, it's unethical. And outside of that, it was a really good shopping report. <laughs> right. Other than that, Miss Lincoln, how was the play? Um, Linda sends them an F, just a regular F. We also have an F from Jonathan in Wellington, and I don't feel the least bit guilty by weighing in with my F for yeah, Southern 441 Nissan. I don't, Nisa. I don't um, like them. Rick? I've got Tom Gilliland with no fine print here, a big bold F. Donovan, they get a total F. That dealer is a complete hellhole. No one should go there. 1900 for an appearance package is a joke. Mark Ryan with an F. The appearance package fee was a complete joke. Kit Kat, no mask, empty hand sanitizer, bait and switch equals F. And Karen with a big fat F. Cowgo, F from start to finish.
Mm-mm-mm. Okay, Nancy, uh, you're up. I'm going to hold that addendum label up uh, so you can see what... It's a little foggy there, but that $1,973 appearance package is on the addendum label. Yeah, interesting. I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. My hair is on fire. Uh, <laughs> is there anything worse than an F? There is a G. Incomplete. <laughs> and it stands for... You, beat you have to repeat the course. <laughs> Yeah, there can be an I. You can, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I'm sorry. Your, your question is answered. Martha on Facebook gives them an F minus. So there you go. And Lee gives them an F as well. So not too many people are happy with the performance of Southern 441 Nissan. Okay. Jonathan was pointing at me, I think. You need to vote. Oh, it's time for your Oh, grade. I got to vote. Yeah, that's right. Uh, unequivocal F. Just uh, I, I don't hesitate at all. Uh, terrible report. And... Uh, we asked uh, Southern, Southern 441 to get their act together. That's right. Terry Taylor, if you're listening, ah, you don't care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was mean. I don't know Terry Taylor at all. Yeah, I did. <laughs> anyway, do we have any more content for our listeners? Because uh, we have four minutes. Oh. Uh, just uh, you know, Actually, uh, three. I, I go three back to I go back to re renewing. I know the media is listening to this. Radio, TV, newspaper, all of you out there. Let your reporters, your 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 ethical, your 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 moral, your your uh, what is the word for a really good reporter? Someone that wants to tell the truth. Let them free. Let them do tell the truth. Build a reputation as being the TV station or the radio station that cares about the consumers. It might pay you dividends. Don't squash the reality of hidden fees at car dealerships. That's How about right. uh, Attorney General Ashley Moody? Uh, boy, she sure can. This is what I was talking about, ladies and gentlemen, in the beginning of the show. You know, we really try very hard to expose all the call car dealers and how they're taking advantage of the consumer. Uh, but we can't do it alone. So we, uh, you know, implore you to, to uh, give uh, Attorney General Ashley Moody a call. I gave out her number earlier, but I'll give, you, give it to you again. I can't repeat it enough, and her phone number is 850-414-3300. Let her know how you feel. That's Attorney General Ashley Moody. All right. And a quick shout-out to my 13-year-old daughter. Happy birthday. My youngest is 13. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Josie. Happy birthday to you. Hey. All Happy right. birthday, Josie. <laughs> Okay, folks, we've uh, had a great time. Uh, Jonathan has kept us on the straight and narrow, and uh, we want to thank all of you for tuning in to Earl Stewart on Cars. And uh, as you can hear, we love doing the show. From all of us here, we wish you a wonderful weekend, and stay tuned next week, same time, from 8 to 10 o'clock. Have a blessed weekend, and stay safe.